Uh-oh. Look what I did. That's Divine Song. Hello. This is actually my Tumblr. I swear to God it is. If you don't believe me, you can kiss my ass. But, yeah, it was like on Griffith's Huggy Box, and then the read more links to this. Uh, please, that I show you. See? Right here. Yeah, so, like, it's a, it was a plot bunny that was based on another work, and I don't think I'll ever do it because reasons, but... But I mean, it's also the fact that it's based on someone else's fan work, so I'm kind of like, nah, I'm not gonna go there, like, meta fic. I've done it once before with a fic called The Inland Taipan, but I asked if it was okay, and he said yes, but with this one, not only, I never asked, and and I don't know what she might say, so I'm just, I just never asked, so as far as I'm concerned, it's a no-go, so... Anyway, so a while ago, I forgot how long, I came across this fic, and somehow it gets to me. Maybe because it's Griffith. Whatever the case, it spawned a lot of bunnies for me. They're mostly original idea in an entirely different world bunnies, but they're bunnies with varying degrees of results. Yeah, this fic was really inspiring. The only thing is that I do feel like it's called A Crow Buries Its Secrets. And, well, I'll show you. Like... I'm not reading it, though. Yeah, it's by Endless... Oh, God damn it. Eight of three. But, um, this is it right here. No hard feelings, yeah. But I do feel like it makes Griffith worse than what he actually is. Honestly, I think, if anything, he would probably encourage the relationship so he doesn't have to worry about dealing with his feelings about Guts. And then he can go off and marry Charlotte, you know, with guts gone. Like, oh, we can just be friends and not worry. That's kind of how I see it. But then Griffith would just feel like, shit. <laughs> it is true that he's possessive, but I also feel like he's very pragmatic as well. And spent a lot of time in denial of his feelings. But that is just how I interpret it. She has a different interpretation, and that's okay. So anyway, here's the, the plot bunny, the last one that I have before just moving on. Anyway, the latest one is really the only one that can fit in the Berserk universe as a what-if. Basically, the maid is trying to leave because Griffith intimidates her with a single terrifying look. <laughs> Griffith is well known for this, but I can't see him shooting it at someone like her. I mean, you have to be a bona fide threat, and she's not going to be. But anyway, um, he scares her, basically, due to her initial interest in guts, but the queen, I call her Beatrice, stops her and asks her what is wrong. Since the maid, I'll go ahead and call her Milla, can't say no, she answers and is persuaded to stay. Hmm. To put it simply, Milla ends up becoming the queen's royal mistress, or new lady-in-waiting, and under the queen's protection. Yeah, uh, I'm not really gonna bother, like, worrying about what people on Earth did or what they didn't do, because I don't care, the berserk world is a bit different. So in this case, it is possible for someone like Mila to end up in this situation. So anyway, either way, while it's not unprecedented for a maid to end up in that position, it's highly irregular. Charlotte, along with everyone else, is shot, considering the Queen's attitude toward those of quote-unquote humble birth, and Griffith is a bit displeased. One would think Griffith wouldn't care, right? After all, she's away from guts, right? Well, no. He isn't happy with the arrangement. If he really believed that she was a greedy outsider, then wouldn't becoming anyone's royal mistress kind of prove it? Oh, and the King of Midland doesn't care, so no one can really do anything about it, nor do most people want to. I mean, they don't fully approve for obvious reasons, but Mila isn't considered a threat to anyone, so they have little issue with it. Other servants, and the Hawks on the other hand, are a bit resentful. Griffith thinks Mela is being used as a pawn, and that when someone like Mela reaches a rank so quickly, it means that they are either wealthy very talented, or they have something the royals and nobles want. And I'm going to give an example here. Madame Pompadour. She was the mistress of, Queen, of Louis XV. 
and she was a huge influence in the French court, and she was a wealthy commoner. She was also very talented, so she was definitely desired by Louis XV. So that's what I kind of based it on, you know, that, that when a commoner is in that level, it's their wealthy, talented, or you see what I'm saying here. But anyway, the Queen's motive was to have someone from the outside to vent to after Julius's death, and someone unlikely to say anything to anyone. To her, someone like Mella is a perfect source of comfort. While Griffith claimed no hard feelings at the end of A Crow Buries Its Secrets, he eventually grows to hate Milla. I don't know if it's Milla or Mella. Ugh. Gosh, I screw that up all the damn time. But anyway, he eventually grows to hate Milla due to her behavior actions towards him. She learns to stand up to him pretty effectively. And the fact that she would give everyone except for him and the Hawks any kind of acknowledgement, respect, or gifts. It was also clear that she was no longer interested in Guts and was even repulsed by him. That signaled to both of them she likely found out about Adonis. If she encountered him, she would look away from him, veer all far to the side, and basically treated him like he didn't exist. No curtsy, no bow, no greeting, nothing. It was all about Queen Beatrice and those she approved of. Needless to say, Mila is involved in the conspiracy, but it's mostly that she is complicit with the assassination attempt rather than actively doing anything. She even leaves in the middle of the ball because she can't stand seeing Griffith and also wants to avoid Charlotte. Those of you who know about Volume 8 and Episode 18 in the anime will know what happens next. I... Yeah, I a confession bear here. <laughs> I, I'm just not going to say it, okay? Just read it. Too bad. I'll get there, because that's like something I should be doing on my channel. Anyway, as for Mila, well, at best she manages to escape Midland entirely and moves on. At worst, she's caught by Griffith, and well, her fate is in his hands. He has her diary and pictures, basically paid dirt, that she had been writing and drawing since becoming a mistress. It all damns her for basically being an accessory to a murder attempt. What I envision is that the king decides to leave her fate to Griffith, and he takes all of her new wardrobe and artwork and forces her to sit outside with them. This was inspired by Race the Red Lantern, which is a Chinese movie that I highly recommend you see. And anyway, he demands an apology, claiming that it didn't have to be this way, but she refuses. So he has all of her things burnt, and she's forced to stay outside and watch them burn. She's not allowed inside until she apologizes, but she doesn't, and eventually passes out and dies. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's the gist of it. Yeah, that's a fat bunny, and I don't, I don't do too well with fat bunnies, but I read the hell out of the fic of whoever decides to adopt it. Just that Mila belongs to Hikachu, so a different character in a similar situation might be a better idea. Whatever the case, it's up for adoption. <laughs> Damn, yeah, I mean, this one, I don't know if it gets to me. She's a pretty good writer. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's it for Berserkmas Day 28. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later. Goodbye.